welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here and welcome once again to my kitchen today i am filming a video kind of in part of my clean eating 101 where i want to talk to you guys about cooking oils and oils found in foods i get a lot of questions about this there are oils in so many different foods out there and you guys reach out and say what's a good oil what's a bad oil what should i look for what should i buy what should i avoid and we're going to even talk about cooking spray because i know that non-stick cooking spray is big in the ww community because it's zero points so we can use it to spray our pans cook our vegetables, cook our protein. So I wanna talk all things oil and share with you guys what's considered a good oil and a bad oil and kind of what to watch for when you're purchasing food and buying these oils. So if you wanna hear all about oil, stay tuned. On a run from my given disaster Speed away from the holy mind I want to go into some of the most well-known oils and whether they are good to use or bad to use. So first I want to start with olive oil. We all know about olive oil. There are two types of olive oils out there. There's just a traditional olive oil and there's an extra virgin olive oil. Both of those, believe it or not, serve two completely different purposes. I honestly never knew this until I started doing research for this video. And also kind of when I switched over to clean eating, I wanted to know more about the different types of oils out there, what I should be buying, what I should be avoiding in food was really the main thing that brought me over to researching oils. But I want to tell you guys a little bit about regular olive oil and extra virgin olive oil because they both honestly serve a completely different purpose. So regular traditional olive oil is really, really good to cook with. It is processed at a very high heat, so it strips out some of the nutritional benefits of the olive oil, but it also strips out any flavor that olive oil has. If you do purchase an extra virgin olive oil, it does have a flavor. And that's why a lot of people don't like to fry with olive oil. So if you buy your traditional olive oil, not extra virgin, it's great to cook with. Now, if you are going to go down the road of extra virgin olive oil, which is honestly my favorite, that is not necessarily designed so much for cooking as it is designed to finish your food. Drizzle on top of vegetables or fish or really, really good to make dressings and marinades. It is also stable at high heat and is good for cooking, but you are going to have a little bit of a flavor profile with extra virgin olive oil. So I would recommend saving a little bit of money and just buying a traditional olive oil for cooking. Extra virgin olive oil is cold pressed and is not process. So it's a very, very good oil. I would say definitely one of the top two oils that I would recommend using for food, for both finishing food and for cooking food. So olive oil, gets a big thumbs up. Another good oil is coconut oil. And coconut oil actually got a bad rap. I remember, I remember when coconut oil was all the rage. Everyone had coconut oil. And then I also remember when coconut oil started getting a bad rap from physicians out there saying that it was a bad fat, a bad saturated fat. And then I remember coconut oil kind of disappearing and not being as popular or as trendy as it once was. But coconut oil actually is a fantastic oil option. Yes, it has saturated fat, that saturated fat is a medium chain fatty acid, which actually is a good for you saturated fat. Coconut oil is great for cooking because you can cook at a very, very high temperature. The issue with coconut oil and cooking for people is the taste because it definitely does give off that little bit of coconut taste even when you're using it at high heat for cooking. It's a nice stable oil. And did you know you can use it up for a one-to-one -one replacement of butter? So you can always use coconut oil as a one-to-one -one ratio instead of butter. Now, when you're looking to buy coconut oil, you want to make sure that you are buying organic, if at all possible, and unrefined coconut oil, not refined coconut oil. And one other little side note about coconut oil, it's so good in your hair, you guys. It's good in your hair. It's good on your skin. You can make a leave-in type of deep moisturizing conditioner using coconut oil. Go ahead and rub it in your hair. Leave it on there for 30 minutes and rinse. You are going to be a greasy mess, but your hair will come out shiny and pretty and soft. So don't listen to what the old physicians used to say about coconut oil. Coconut oil definitely gets a big thumbs up. 
When I was at Walmart actually today, I saw another oil that caught my eye. So I wanted to do a little research on it and that is Thrive Oil. And I found it with the cooking sprays and it is actually an LG based oil. This is a fantastic oil. The only downfall is that it is extremely expensive. It was about $13 for a fairly small bottle at Walmart. It's a great substitute for your vegetable oil, your canola oil. You can fry with it and it does really well up to a high heat. Again, the only downfall is it's expensive, but I saw it at Walmart and then I think I've also seen it at Fred Meyer, just kind of out of the corner of my eye, but check it out next time you're in the grocery store because it also gets a thumbs up. Next is ghee. Ghee is something that is all over the Whole30 community, the keto, low carb community, and basically what ghee is, is it's clarified butter but all ghees are not created equal. If you are going to buy ghee, you wanna make sure you're buying grass fed, 100% grass fed ghee. Ghee is great for cooking and it is very, very good at high heat. It doesn't break down the good fat in the ghee when cooking at really high heat. I wouldn't necessarily fry in it, like deep fry, but you can certainly pan fry vegetables, potatoes, meat in ghee, and it gives it that nice, rich, buttery flavor. But again, make sure you're going for grass fed and ghee, thumbs up. And the last good oil is my favorite oil, as you guys know, and that is avocado oil. I am obsessed. I love avocado oil. I buy mine at Costco. The big bottle of chosen foods is under $11. It is a killer, killer deal. So what makes avocado oil so good? First of all, it's high in oleic acid, which helps lower bad cholesterol. So it gives you a good amount of fat in your diet, but it also helps lower your bad cholesterol. It is 100% flavorless. That's why a lot of people will use avocado oil in replacement of extra virgin or olive oil because it doesn't have any taste at all. It is literally a fantastic oil to deep fry in or to cook in or even to drizzle over the top of your finished food. Just make sure that you're buying a extra virgin avocado oil and also a cold pressed avocado oil. So that is partially what makes like Chosen Foods such a great brand. It is both of those things. Cold pressed means that it is not processed by any heat. It is simply pressed and that keeps all the good fat in there and takes all the bad fat out. So highly, highly recommend avocado oil. That one, two huge thumbs up. So what about bad oils or what are considered not good for you oils? Those are pretty simple. Your traditional cheap oil, they're cheap for a reason. Those are things like vegetable oil, canola oil, not good. They are made 100% from GMO. The plants are GMO. They're sprayed heavily with chemicals. And when they extract the oil out of the plant, they use a chemical called hexane. Now they claim that when they process the oil, because it undergoes a lot of processing at very high heat, that it takes out the hexane but who knows, right? And I don't know about you, but I don't wanna eat hexane. So that's what they use to actually extract the oil. And the reason for that is because they wanna get every last drop of the oil out of the plant. And that's what makes it so cheap is the heavy processing that they do on vegetable and canola oil. Also what happens is since it is so refined and so processed, it turns those good for you fats into actual trans fats. You're eating trans fats if you're eating canola oil or vegetable oil or actually several of the other oils that we're gonna talk about today on the not good for you list. So I would just stay away from vegetable and canola oil if at all possible. Now the only exception to that rule is if you can find an expeller pressed canola oil. I've never seen an expeller pressed vegetable oil, but I have seen expeller pressed canola oil. So what the heck does expeller press mean? Basically what that means is that it's processed by pressing and not by high heat. Again, when you process oil with extremely high heat, it strips away all of the good fat and turns that into the bad trans fat. So that's why you can get away with canola oil if it's expeller press, but I still definitely would gravitate towards the olive or avocado oil or coconut oil well over any type of canola oil. Corn oil, just as bad as canola and vegetable. It is 100% GMO and it goes through the same heavily processed high heat processing as canola and vegetable oil. So I would absolutely stay away from corn oil as well. Some other oils to take off your list are grapeseed, safflower, sunflower, and soybean oil. All of these, same process, 
heavily, heavily high heat processing and takes that good fat, turns it to a bad fit. The only exception to the rule of really any of these oils, again, is if you can find them expeller press. So if you are going to buy any of those oils, your canolas, your vegetables, your sunflower, your safflower, they definitely need to be expeller press. Now on that same note, when you are buying food, always, always check the ingredient label. You will sometimes get duped with oils. It'll say organic sunflower oil or organic safflower oil. If it doesn't say expeller pressed, it still goes under that really high heat processing, which strips away the good fat. So I would absolutely avoid that. Definitely always on the ingredient label, if there's any type of oil, with the exception of olive oil, because they don't expel or press olive oil, because it's actually done with a cold press anyways, you wanna make sure it says expeller pressed. It can say organic, that's even better. Organic expeller pressed, Heck yeah, but make sure that those oils on the ingredient label read as expeller press. Now let's briefly touch on cooking oils. The issue with cooking oil, other than the oil that it's made with itself, so all of those PAMs that are made with the canola, the vegetable oil, you wanna stay away from those. But you can also get tricked a little bit with cooking oil. You're gonna see things such as Pam olive oil or Pam avocado oil. So you're like, oh, I'm gonna grab this because it's made with olive oil or avocado oil. The issue with cooking sprays, in addition to the oil that is used, is the propellant. So any can that uses a propellant, I don't know that I'd wanna put a propellant in my body. That's what is used to propel out the cooking oil. There are so many solutions and so many better options for oils out there. You definitely wanna stick with your avocado oil and your olive oil, but you wanna make sure you're getting cooking spray that is not propellant based. So my favorite is the Chosen Foods Avocado Oil. You can buy a two pack of this at Costco for about $5.99. You can also find this in your grocery store. I recently saw at Fred Meyer, the Simple Truth Organic. They had a extra virgin olive oil, non-propellant two pack of bottles for about $6.99. So just make sure when you're buying your cooking spray, number one, it's olive oil or avocado oil. And number two, it is not using a propellant to get the oil out of the spray bottle. So that's it for oils. I hope that that helped shed a little bit of light out there for you on what to look for, not only on ingredient labels, but what cooking sprays and oils to purchase and which ones to avoid. Again, I, really got interested in this when I transitioned my eating over to a clean approach to WW. I really wanted to make sure that I was choosing the best oils to put in my body. So again, I, I love avocado oil. You guys see me use not only the Chosen Foods oil itself, but also the avocado cooking spray. Cooking spray is a must on WW because we don't have all the points in the world for for oil. Now I recommend that you do get some healthy fat every day. Like I would use a little bit of oil every day, but of course we can't cook all of our meals in avocado oil and stay within our points because we wouldn't be able to eat anything. It would just be all avocado oil. But I just recommend that you do a little bit of your own research if you would like into oils. But that's what I found out and I definitely wanted to share that with you guys because I know a lot of you are trying to move a little bit into a healthier approach to WW. So again, I hope that really helped you guys out. It was fun for me to do the research. And of course, I always like to share what I find out for you guys. So if you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. Make sure you're subscribed and hit your little bell so you're notified whenever a new video is uploaded. You don't want to miss one. Thumbs up this video if you're enjoying these informational videos and part of my Clean Eating 101 series. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave your comments down below and your questions if you have any when it comes to oils. I'm happy to help with whatever information I have and I can always look up and find the answers to the questions I don't know the answer to. So thank you guys again so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.